Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Hey everyone, if you're watching this podcast, then it's probably safe to say that you're like me and you love hunting, shooting sports, and of course, you support conservation of wildlife and wild places. I really believe in the power of free market principles. So I wanna ask you today to join me in making an impact and consider supporting companies like Ruger, Onyx Hunt, and Dead Downwind that are not only supporting this podcast, but they are also supporting the values and traditions that we live out day to day. Thank you all for watching. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning into the Wild and Uncut podcast. I'm your host, Christy Titus, and I am here with my good friend, mule skinner extraordinaire, Robert Redmond. Yep. Robbie and my dad have been friends. Well, your mom, was my dad's first or second grade teacher? High school. No, 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 like little elementary school, I thought. Mom never taught elementary school. No, well, I'm arguing when that was wrong right there. I started this out on the wrong <laughs> foot. Yeah, but your mom was my dad's teacher. Your mom lived to be, what, 101? 100, uh, yeah, 102. Yeah. Almost 103. Yeah, taught Lewis. And so that means I have to put up with you for like another 30 years. <laughs> yeah, 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 Dad, he lived to 88, so I hope to make it to 88, I think. Yeah, yeah. And that's, well, as long as I can go, I don't mind, but. Yeah. You know how Well, I go, you do. That's one thing um, I got to give you. Uh, there's no lack of go <laughs> in what you have going on. Well, I try to keep up with you guys. Holy smokes. I can't keep up with you. Jesus. Yeah, you can. So, Robbie, when he, when I was, what, 16 or 18, you bought Jester. Jester. I bought Jester from uh, Lewis, Christy's dad. Yeah. And uh, I had bought Jester originally when Jester was two. And I am not sure how old I was 14 or 16, something like that. We had him for a few years. And Jester, we had his full brother, Chester. And they, both wanted to be the boss and fought all the time. It was brutal. They were killing each other, fighting. It was like that stallion mm -hmm. syndrome, you know. Yep. So and then they, Lewis sold me a... Uh, Jester. Jester. Which just split him up. Jester was uh, my very first mule. And I didn't know a thing about mules. I didn't know a thing about horses. I didn't know how to ride. Yeah. So it was quite a learning curve, but I wanted to do it. I, I wanted to get out in the the back country and uh, see pretty scenery. And um, you're a huh? you're a scenery seeing guy because you're also a f enthusiast of uh, very specialized Harley Davidsons. Yeah, I've been doing that for. For a long time, yep. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Seventy-six was my first Harley. Still got parts of that bike in a chopper frame. Still ride it, and, and it was in the chopper frame in '84. And uh, anyway, I've been doing that forever. And the, mind you, you guys, you're seventy-three. 71. 71. My bad. 71, <laughs> and you rode your chopper, like full-fledged chopper, from Central Oregon to Sturgis this year because his bike ain't no pavement princess. Uh, trailer queen. Trailer queen. That's what it is. Trailer queen. Ain't no trailer queen. Oh, my gosh. And this thing 
is like not just a motorcycle, but it's a hard to ride motorcycle, like suicide shifter. Yeah, open belt drive, uh, two carburetors, magneto. It's a, it's a, it's a work of in progress. I've had it forever. It's a, yeah. So if you guys don't know what a suicide shifter is, you have one hand on the steering wheel, right? Okay, imagine you're riding your motorcycle. One hand on the steering wheel. Foot goes on the clutch. Other hand reaches back behind the seat and shifts. Hence yeah. the name. It, you know, when you roll into Sturgis and you're riding a bike like that, I think everybody instantly knows... Like, this man knows how to ride a bike. You're not messing around. Yeah, you usually draw a crowd, and uh, you usually walk away, and because a lot of people ask questions, and you've been asked a million. It's all good. It's all good. You like to have young people to get to learn. and But, yeah, it, uh, some of the questions sometimes are, uh, you know don't pertain too much <laughs> so you rolled from being like die hard gearhead which you still are into full-fledged mule skinner literally overnight buying jester yeah yeah we're just, uh, always my bu good buddy john kichek and i were always hunting elk hunting mostly and uh to get away from people we just kept going further and further back and uh and it kept getting harder to get further back. And uh, we always talk, sat around it season after season and talking about having horses or mules. And uh, the right time came along and Lewis gave me a call and was, kind of re was really interested. And uh, I had a place and I had a fence and that's needed all that first. And uh, so I bought Jester from Lewis. And uh, intro to our podcast is now the stories that ensued when Robbie bought Jester. Yeah, yeah, that. Uh, yeah, you could say I was a, a student. Student of the mule. Uh, and let me tell you, Jester is not an easy mule because he is quick witted and. I mean, he wants to do what he wants to do, and if you don't tell him what he's doing, he will tell you what he's doing. Yeah, it's like, uh, like he was, uh, uh, I was a substitute teacher, and he's, he, he's the uh, kid, and Lewis had him trained up really well, and like I said at the beginning, I knew nothing about how to ride. I knew nothing about anything about it. And uh, he worked me over pretty good, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. There, uh, and uh, But I was willing to try. And uh, Let's talk about one of your first trips into, um, into the Three Sisters. All right. First trip uh, went up to uh, Caldas Lake. And uh, we're packed in around the back side of the lake. And my buddy John took the boat back across the lake and went home and worked for a week. And I was up there a week early, so I loaded Jester up uh, on a saddle that didn't fit too well with saddle panniers. And I tried to weigh out my stuff, uh, tents, roll a table, whatever in there and i was going to lead him back up in the wilderness up there to little snowshoe lake uh, back up in there a long way so after three or four days of hunting if it didn't pan out we go back up there and had a little spike camp so i started leading uh, jester up the trail and uh yes yeah, got in there about a mile or so and the saddle started to roll and pack started to roll and I figured figured well I better uh, straighten this up so I tied him up and uh, he started pawing in the trail some of the advice that Lewis her dad gave me was don't let him paw in the trail 
you know, and I'm remembering the things that he told me because... Robbie thinks he's going to get a ticket from Fish and Game for letting the mule paw on the trail. And yeah, and uh, that's so he is, her... and he's the ultimate rule follower. So he's panicked about it. So anyway, I jumped down there to uh, to uh, hobble him, and uh, the saddle's rolling off to the side a little bit there. And I reached down there to hobble him, and I instead of being out to the side of his front legs, I was on my side with my leg parallel and back with toe in the ground and he reaches over like a good meal should and pulls one foot over closer so I could hobble him up. Same time it kind of kind of staggered and lifted that back foot up and it came down right on top of my ankle. Flipped me. I thought it broke my ankle and I was doing like a Michael Jackson break dance flipping around underneath him there. <laughs> And I, it was, nobody around, and it, it really, really hurt. Oh, I didn't know. Finally, I, I got my wind back, stood up, and bounced around a little, and I realized your leg wasn't broke. Was I must be standing? I can move a little and right, yeah. And uh, undid the panniers, tightened the saddle up. Too much stuff. Left this roller table laying there and uh, on the side of the trail. So my two German Shepherds and Jester and I went on up the trail and I just gritted it out and it hurt, but I made it back up in there about four or five more miles or whatever. Then I got on, dumped the stuff off and I got on Jester and I'm riding down this trail that I'd walked forever, but I was riding this mule, finally doing it, you know, and really, Okay, pretty good. I got back down to the roller table with the two German Shepherds and my uh, mule, Jester. I got off, picked up the roller table, climbed back up in the saddle, and I had that roller table across, across my arms and holding the rein. I didn't know how to ride. I didn't know how to rein. Every mistake you could probably make, I was making. And uh, anyway, Jester kind of looks left, looks right, squatted down in the back and right out through the lodge poles he went like a double-A fuel dragster. And I'm <laughs> Running. Like, and I'm like, how in the heck, what the heck? And I see a wall of them coming, and I thought, how in the heck are we going to fit through there? So I couldn't stay in the saddle too well. I guess I, guess I fell off anyway. I, you uh, guess he fell off. I ju- I jumped. Now, mind you, Jester wasn't bucking, just running really fast. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Anyway. Just, yeah. just as bad sometimes when your arm's full of roller table. Anyway, I'm trying to chuck the roller table, hang on, and it's all happening really, really fast. Trees are zooming by his head. <laughs> yeah. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> A little clear patch there. And so I figure this is this is it. I, and I f- I'm going to die. <laughs> anyway, I fell off. And landed on a stob with my left side and the ribs. Ugh. And uh, I thought I broke my ribs. Anyway, I think I just ended up bruising them really bad. The two German Shepherds and Jester just bolted. Just took off back down the trail. Nowhere in sight. My German Shepherds, faithful German Shepherds, left me. <laughs> For the mule. And with the mule. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I pick up the roller table, and I'm carrying the roller table, limping on that ankle, and holding my ribs for about a mile back to our our base oh ca- base camp. And there, Jester was standing, and the two dogs. And uh, he, anyway, uh, that was your first trip. That, that was, was your the, inaugural trip on Jester. Yeah, that was the first time, and I had serious doubts. And I was really questioning myself if I was going to be a mule man or not. But I'd I had paid Lewis a good sum of money for that mule, and he, I, I didn't and you had it. dreams. <laughs> and dream. you had dreams, the places you wanted to go, and I didn't want to quit. Yeah, yeah. So you stuck it out. So he ends up buying another mule, Katie, and yeah. so now he has two mules. Yeah. And we come out here to the same unit we're in now, the Steens unit. Right. And who was hunting? Was it dad hunting? It must have been dad. Dad was hunting. So my dad had an antelope tag. 
and dad was on Jester's brother Chester. I was on our big sorrow mule Hank, and Robbie's riding his new mule Katie. So we take out across the desert, and we're riding along, and life is good. Until dad decides he's going to take a shortcut underneath a big juniper tree. Now, mind you, my dad has this big 10-gallon straw cowboy hat on. And he goes to get underneath this juniper tree, and I'm screaming at him. I'm like, dad, you're not going to fit underneath the juniper tree. Like, this is stupid. Go around the tree. Like, give a steering wheel on the mule, you know? And he gets that mule underneath that juniper tree, and his head comes up into the limbs. And that mule thinks that something's jumping out of the tree onto him. Mm -hmm. Starts a bucking, jumping in the air, jumping in the air. Dumps dad on the ground right there. Yeah. He's jacking Lewis up through those limbs and down, up and down. Oh, up, geez, uh, like a pogo stick. Up, bing, up and down. Bing, 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 bing. And, and these are like old, dry, dead juniper limbs, all green on top. The, wor- the worst on the bottom of the limbs. Oh, man, he took it. He took a beating. So next thing I know, this big, giant black mule is making a beeline for me on my mule. And the next thing you know, I'm off to the races running and bucking because Hank thinks that this is going to be now a buck party. (laughs) Woohoo! And he takes off running and bucking through the sagebrush and I remember thinking I'm either going to land on this rock or I'm going to land in the sagebrush. So I I flip off him, land in the sagebrush, tear the butt out of my pants. So Mm -hmm. yeah, Lewis, Lewis, they're both on the ground. Mules run down the slope, down the hill, about 300 yards or 200 or better. And Lewis has got a cut from one side of his forehead all the way around like a big C, bleeding. And and, and my ass is hanging out. And she, she's all sc- scuff, <laughs> scuff, scuffed up to, uh, in, in places and, and, oh, and, and pulverized a bit. And, and Lewis is pretty good. And... Went over on Katie and asked her if she was all right. She said, yeah, it was either the rock or the sagebrush. And then so Dad and I start walking trying to go. Like, this is what we call the walk of shame. This is the full walk of shame with mules is when you're limping and bleeding <laughs> following your mule. And Dad and I are, I'm bawling Dad out. I'm I'm rightfully mad because, I mean, I ate it hard. And... Um, I, it was, it sucked. And so we fought all the way back to our mules and we get on the yeah. mules and. They're Titus in and out. Titus in and out. Lu, 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 Lewis and Christy, the typical <laughs> Titus <laughs> yakking at each other. And and she's reading him the riot act and he's reading her the riot act. He's trying to embarrass her, says, Robbie's looking at your butt. Yeah. <laughs> And you, 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 he you, did like you, it was a good G string. I don't and, know. And, and, <laughs> and just, just, just ribbing her as bad as he could, uh, try to embarrass her. And she just turns around and she's a snarling at him and says, Well, he's probably seen plenty of them before. Uh, <laughs> it was we, no big deal. We were, we were jar, <laughs> jar and hard. So then we take off. We're all happy again. We're going out across. We're going to go find an antelope. And we cross a creek. Yeah, I was up the. Pardon me, but while this was going on and they're down the hill, I go up just a little above Lewis's tree and there was a little dinky tiny pencil thing stream of water coming down and they had fell all these juniper trees years ago and they were gray, dead ones, you know, and little grass there and that little stream, plenty of space to go across. Well, I wait there. They bring come up their two mules, and I'm. Lewis says, "Lead the way." I go to lead the way. Bandy or Katie won't go, so Lewis and Christy go right across there. I, I try to duck right in behind old Hank and Christy, and lo and behold, Katie gets right to the creek, the little stream thing there, and jumps completely sideways, and runs the top of one of those dead gray junipers the very tip of that thing right right in the side of my leg and 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 almost got, almost to the crown jewels almost to there <laughs> and and there i had a big rip in my pants and i was bleeding 
So there we were, the three of us, antelope hunting in the Steens unit. My butt's hanging out. Dad's face is cut and bleeding, and Robbie's junk's hanging out. It wasn't hanging. <laughs> she keeps saying that. But Dad was saying it. It was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. He he, he never, he can create stuff. <laughs> It was a good time, though. If you've ever thought about owning a mule after this podcast, you guys might reconsider mm-hmm. because inevitably you're going to have the same stories that we have because um, that's basically life with mules. Eventually you have Rex. And um, we have, we've been hunting together now for 20, 20 years. 20 years, yeah. Over, tw- no, more than, a little over. Oh, more than 20 years. Uh, and so we have quite a few interesting stories but going back to your younger days of mule ownership Robbie my favorite story arguably is the story of you learning how to ride better yeah yeah you want to hear you want to hear that one don't you this is such a good story well as uh, you can make it short or long we'll make, make it, it ca- long make, wait, we'll just go. give her all you got all right I had uh, I had just her two years that was bef- and this was just before I got Katie Mule. And anyway, uh, the secretary at work, uh, Jill Dillman, a real nice gal, a horsey lady, barrel racer gal, said you ought to wait a couple years or better before you take some lessons. So a couple years went by. She suggested, okay, go take some lessons. So I went over to Debbie Kellogg's place in Baker City, took some lessons. Where I watched and stuff, and they had an, they had a uh, fancy trainer come in, like a mule specialist, yeah. uh, Cam- come in. Cameron, yeah, Brad Cameron. Anyway, they were teaching ground training and stuff like that. Moral of the story is, I get home. You're all fired up to uh, get to training uh, on Jester. I, 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 I need to train Jester, and mind you, I needed to train Jester like I needed another rockety head you know or something. <laughs> something. and uh and, and, and uh, the more story it didn't work out here goes had a, <laughs> had a front yard there with grass and i had a electric fence in a circle out there and i got home from work about four or five hot summer day and i put on the old uh, tennis shoes and a pair of gym shorts and that was it Walked out there, got Jester in there, and I'm got this lead rope. And you're gonna lunge him. I'm gonna lunge him, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you learned this in your and mule I, clinic. I figured he needed, he needed, I need to learn how to do that and, and get control of this character, Jester. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 and, uh, the substitute teacher thing, you know. And uh, anyway, uh, he made a couple laps around me. And crowded in on me and cow kicked me. And he cow kicked me right there. Right in the crown jewels. Just off to the side, but close enough it got it all. And uh, dropped me Now off. Robbie's bragging a little because he's saying it kicked him in the leg and, you know, when whatever. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it dropped me like a sack of rocks. I mean, not on my hands and knees, right on the down. I caught a little bit of wind, and I got up on my hands and knees, and I crawled out from underneath the fence in a gravel driveway there, and I slowly made my way up to my hands and knees and and, and up on my feet, and I walked across that and up on the porch and sat in a swing there. I was just sitting there, and I couldn't swing in the swing. It hurt you were in too shock. Much. And... Uh, at the time, uh, Dondria came home. That was my girlfriend, and he drove in the driveway, pulls up on the slab there, jumps out, jumps up there, and sits in the swing. How's your day going? And I did this and that. What, what are you doing? And she and I said, oh, okay. She'd move that swing a little. Every time she moved that swing a little, I'd put my foot down. <laughs> it hurt too much to even move that swing. And so... Uh, so she looks at me and she's, man, you're white as a ghost. What happened? I said, Jester, kick me. When? Just now. She says, where? And I said, right here. And she says, well, have you looked? And I says, no, I'm afraid to. So she works there at Central Oregon Radiology. She's a, you know? she's a medical professional. Any, some, anyway, some yeah, yeah. And uh, 
So she says, stand up. I stood up there. She said, well, pull down your gym shorts. She's a brave lady. And I know her and stuff. And I had a bruise from my knee all the way up to my balls. <laughs> And my my and I felt like my my uh, penis was tore off, <laughs> and here and here's a cut across the top, uh, halfway on my, my penis. Oh, there, God. all bloody. <laughs> she, the mule almost castrated him. And I was, uh, and she says she got on the phone and called a nurse friend of hers, and they were afraid that it might have busted an artery in there. So, uh, loaded me up in the car and. To the emergency room we went. With his mother. No. She came. She got on the phone, calls my mother. Hey, he got kicked. Where are you? I'll be over here. So, Andre and I are in, a, you know, the little tent thing with the screens in the mm-hmm. emergency room. And uh, anyway, the mom shows up. Everybody wants to see the and situation. I'm all covered, covered up. <laughs> And she says, well, come on, Robert. I've seen you when you were a little boy. And this and that. And, oh, shit. <laughs> anyway, this other guy, he's sick on the other side. Or something's wrong with him. Well, his mother comes in there and is trying to come in our, our little thing there. Everybody you know? wanted to see what and was I, going I, on. And I'm like, I'm like, get these people, get out of here. <laughs> anyway, they come in and say, you got to go have a CAT scan. And... Uh, and then do you need a t- tetanus shot or do you want a shot for pain? And I said, no, I don't need a shot for pain. I'll tough it out. Pretty soon I went through the CAT scan. I came back in the room. They did bring me a shot for, for some from pain. And they said, well, and then I come back in the room and go, okay, you pass the CAT scan. You don't have any anything broken and no blood vessels. And you're okay. But he says, now about that inch, inch long uh, laceration there. He said, you got a choice. We can either stitch it or we can use this super glue. It's like medical super glue. And I said, I'll go for the glue. That's a no That brand. was the first <laughs> mistake. That was a good mistake. That was a better than those staples, I thought. Or stitchers. Or stitches or whatever they were going to think of. So anyway, we load up in the car and we go home and eat some dinner and go to bed that night. I wake up about four o'clock in the morning with a morning boner, <laughs> and all them pubic hairs, hairs, hair, 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 hairs are are, 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 are are stuck to that super glue. Oh, and I, I start not well, not really screaming, no. but I start yelling and hollering. It's not a good situation. And Dondria's laying there. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And of course, she's just laughing, oh, her, yeah. laughing, yeah. Yeah. laughing her rear off about that. And uh, anyway, he still no, has Jester. No more, no more uh, training Jester. And I've never, <laughs> never tried to lunge him ever again. <laughs> I bet you did. You learned your lesson on that. Hey, well, it's a little tough when you you've never been around him before, and you you just don't know really what the heck you're doing. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of growing pains. And that was... That was the most painful of that the was, growing that was, pains. That was a pretty painful growing pain. That was a, that was the most... I think that is my all-time favorite story. And actually, that story is much more fun to listen to after a margarita that my dad makes. Yeah, it's better when he's not around ribbing me the whole time. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he adds to the embarrassment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's also been kind of embarrassing right now to talk about it. <laughs> But everybody loves that you've shared this story because it's the greatest mule yeah. story of my life. I think it's yeah. you so. Got, you got to admit your uh, your weaknesses and strengths and and your stupidities. <laughs> Lunging jester is stupid. No more classes. No more training. Nope. Just ride. You just got to give him his job and make ride. him do it. Yeah. Well, I suppose that you told one story. It's probably my turn. To yep. uh, chime in on one of my latest and greatest accidents, usually surrounding my horse. It always, actually, <laughs> surrounding my horse. Go ahead, Lewis. <laughs> say, say it. You know how to say it. Fury! <laughs> 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 they make fun of me when I say my horse's name. Uh, when I first got my horse, my dad used to call him Cobb. Because he flips his tail over his back because he's an Arabian. And he always says, 
your horse looks like somebody put a corn cob up his Mm -hmm. So I called him Cobb forever. Used to make me so mad. Like, shut up, Dad. That's not. That's not what my horse is called. Because <laughs> I love my little pony. He's precious. So I. <laughs> and he loves ribbing you. Yeah, I he doesn't yeah. pass up a chance. My dad will <laughs> just nail me anytime he gets a free opportunity. Um, so we're packing into Hell's Canyon, and um, we're on the National Forest side, and. Um, we don't have enough mules to ride because Nick is filming. And so we, we have my horse packed, my mule Otis packed, and I think Nick was riding. I was walking. I walked in mm -hmm. and out. And um, I was ahead of you with my yeah, three. your three. You were. And it was open downhill, steep. real steep. It was a bunch of series of switchbacks and really, really hellaciously steep and rocky uh series of switchbacks and when you're going downhill with pack animals or on a, with a pack string you understand like that is not the time you want to have problems ever and so robbie yells back bees i'm way ahead and i had to stir it up yeah he's Lewis his mules stomped the hornet's nest on the ground and got them all peed off so dad rides through safely and nick and i are on foot nick had just put up his drone and so Nick and Nick hadn't gotten back on his horse yet. He wanted to stretch his legs some more, I think, or whatever. But we we're all walking, and Nick was just in front of me. And I had a bad feeling because my the the cadence that my horse had when he's walking changed. And I said, Nick, you better hurry up. We're about to have a problem. And he's like, What are you talking about? I'm like, Go faster, Nick. Yeah. Next thing you know, my horse indos off the trail and flips onto the ground. Now, mind you, he's loaded with packs. My big black mule, Otis, is tied on behind him, and Nick's horse is tied on to Otis. And so they all jump off the trail, flying downhill, following my horse. That steep. Like vertical, like a cow's un un face. Unbelievably <clears throat> steep. Now, if my horse would have fallen off this mountain at any other place, it would have been, he would have died. I mean, that's just all. it. Ten feet in front. 10 feet behind, 20 feet behind, whatever, is... Were there died. some shrubs or a little dinky or something there? There was to kind like of a little him? soft, it was mm -hmm. just like a little soft, um, almost like a little bowl. And he went down and he didn't, he tried to get up. So he's loaded with packs. So he had went down and he was trying to stand. It was so steep. He was trying to like lunge forward and, and get his feet underneath himself. But with the weight, he just couldn't stand back up um, and balance the packs at the same time. And so finally he just laid down. And the next thing I know, it's like he just gave up on life. And his feet just go out uphill. And he just starts sliding down the hill. And he just slides like down the hill. And he's taking all of our animals with him. So we run down, and, and, and the pigtails didn't break on the pack saddle for whatever reason. Right. They don't know. Yeah. Because I don't think Otis yeah. hit the pigtail. He yeah. stayed with him, you know? Yeah, the breakaway, yeah. Yeah, and so we go down, and I untie Otis, get Otis off of him, and tie up Otis, and I run back down to my horse, and he's just laying there, and his eyes are rolling back in his head, and he's just limp. Not flailing, just totally limp. So Nick and I break open the diamond hitch, pull the packs off him, get his saddle, undo it. The breast collar's choking him out. Mm -hmm. Like his breast collar's so tight against his throat, his like pony eyes are rolling back in his head. And he's just going to lay there and die, just relaxed. I'm just dying. And thankfully so, because if he'd have been like thrashing his legs, then, you know, we couldn't have gotten and handled and moved the packs. You know, we, we would have been, if you know, horse thrashing like that, you can't get mm -hmm. close to him. So luckily he just laid there. We undid the, finally got the saddle loosened enough to kind of push it forward to get a little tension on the breast collar. And, yeah, and my, my, mind you, this is <laughs> steeper than heck, brown, brown, brown grass from the, all summer. And rockier than heck, and just steeper than heck, they were wrestling around trying to get this done. Yeah. Footing was just horrible. Horrible. And, it's, and I'm trying to keep my horse alive because he can't breathe, obviously. You know, he's, he's choking to death. And so we get it, the saddle loosened up enough, and I get it unhooked, and I just grab him by his feet. And you know, like when, you, when you're gutting out a deer or something, you'll grab their feet and you flip them over. 
And luckily, my horse wasn't, he just laid there, you know. And so I grabbed his feet, and I took him, and I just rolled his feet and pulled him to the downhill side. And he sat up, and he kind of, you know, uh, shook his shook his head, and you could see him breathe for a second and kind of catch his breath. And he just stood up, and, and he was fine. He was shaking pretty good. Um but he, he was okay. But what had happened is Otis had gotten stung by the bees. And he had these giant Idaho packs on him. And Otis outweighs my horse by probably five or 600 pounds. And he shoved Fury forward. And Fury just literally got shoved <laughs> off the trail to his near demise. Yeah. <laughs> Lewis made it back a little bit to help her. Well, he couldn't help uh, me. But there was not, yeah. And it, it's just no room at all and way too steep. Way too steep. So what we did is we actually took my horse back down to the bottom of the mountain. And we didn't put the packs back on him because he was shaking so bad. And I didn't know if he had broken a rib or his, a spot. I mean, he could have broke, who knows, anything on his body, you know, when he was just absolutely shaking and so we actually came unloaded hank and then um, went back with chester and hank and put fury's packs yeah. on hank and then shuttled him back we, we were able to pack fury out the next day with with the gear and you know he really didn't do anything wrong it's just just the bee thing one of those situations um where bees aren't our friends are they robbie uh, no yeah <laughs> And it's a tough thing when you're, like what she was doing, to, of leading them. Because when that happens, a lot of times they'll want us just, they'll either buck a little or want to speed up. And, and, and then they'll and run shoot, you over. And, and shoot the heck out of there. You're not moving fast enough. And usually if you're up there with them, even the ones you're leading, uh, they'll all go, I'll take off pretty mm-hmm. good. But she's up there going slow and no room on the trail. No room no. at all for him to get by. and uh, Well, I'm lucky that he didn't, lucky it didn't shove knock, me down. Right, yeah. knock you right off the, yeah. into the rocks there. Yeah, because he could have pushed me forward and I fall off and then them fall on me. Yeah. You know, he could have fallen on me pretty easy in that situation. It was a scary, it's one of the scariest wrecks I've ever had um, okay. on one. Yeah. But bees are awful. You know, they... You never can tell what an animal is going to do when they start getting stung by bees. <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's, I learned that. It's a learn early lesson there. You, you learned know. it this week. Yeah. Yeah, we had a new one this week. Yeah, I, I, I got, <laughs> got, a, got a few of those other stories like I started out with. And uh, I've been riding a long time and everything's been going good. Six, eight, ten years, no trouble at all. And two days ago, we're, the first we're, time you ride with me in a couple of years, right? Yeah, yeah and then, yeah. Uh, then we're back out there, uh, and it's uh, October. A lot of flies and uh, hornets, yellow jackets, and uh, we were riding out there, and we'd pull into a juniper tree, tie up, and start glassing the hills. Yeah, we're looking for deer, so we're gonna. So the next day we do that, and I pull up next to this juniper tree. And uh, lo and behold, there was a bee's nest underneath it and uh, didn't really realize it. And uh, I'm getting out of the saddle. I'm happy. Again on Jester. On Jester. On Jester. The other two there, but I swinging my leg off up over the saddle and up over him, and I'm about halfway to the thing. And Jester's getting got stung and, and he just blows up. They all blow up. It I, happened so fast. I landed flat on my back on a, on about a, a rock about the size of a softball and hurt really, really good. And uh, anyway, they ran off. I'm chasing them through the desert. Yogi's picking up the <coughs> saddlebags. Yogi's <laughs> picking up stuff that's flying off the mules. And I'm trying to chase them. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can't catch a mule. It, it's just not happening. And that freaking jester... Bandy, she's nice. She gets out there a little bit and kind of looks around and wants to stop. And Jester's like, every man for himself. 
boom, he's gone. So the other ones keep running. I can't catch him. There's no way I'm catching him. I'm like, yeah. uh, I'm not catching him. About, nope. a, about a mile and a half or so all the way back to camp was the hay, and that's where he was headed. Yeah, he ran. They literally ran all the way back to camp. Robbie comes up, and he's limping, duh, 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 and I'm like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, well, your mules, they're gone. He's like, yeah, they're in camp. Chris, they were. Yeah, Christy's worried kind of about where they went. And I, well, so, so there was were, other people uh, in here on back. horses, so I couldn't tell whose tracks were whose. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they hadn't went on to where you could see where they had went originally in, until later on down the down the way there. And so then you could see little guys rope dragging. Mm-hmm. Then you knew, you know, you were on them, but... I was standing up on this rock trying to glass the sagebrush because at first all I could see is just rolling dust going across the desert. I'm like, no. All of me and Yogi's gear was on the mule, like our backpacks, spotting scopes, like everything because you rode out with us to show us a spot. So I'm taking the free ride, right? I'm like, heck yeah, I get to walk out here without, you know, 35 pounds of gear on my back. I'm going to take that opportunity everything is gone our life flashes before our eyes the mules the gear everything mm-hmm. yeah <clears throat> gone I, if i'd had a if i was in the saddle i've done that before been in the saddle now a lot more years of experience uh, they start jacking around or jumping up and bunk, bucking a bit and, or running or wheeling and getting out of there away from the bees if, if i'd been in the saddle I, i'd have made it but i was half out of it Anyway, I, that was an I, three ibuprofen moment for me when I got back to, after that mile and a half walk. And uh, I met Robbie in camp, and the were, mules were there. They were just standing there, uh, glad to see me. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, and Robbie looks at me. He's like, you got to look at my lower back. I'm like, okay. Next thing I know, Robbie pulls down his pants, booty and all, hanging no. out as the whole thing. <laughs> I saw the moon, the stars, my life flashed before my eyes. <laughs> She's lying. <laughs> it's a Titus. She gets it from her dad. Is, is this okay? I'm like, well, I don't know if it's okay, but you're not bleeding. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had a big bruise there or something. I don't, yeah. It might be bruised now, though, but at the yeah. time it wasn't. Well, it had, not, you had some scratches there, but nothing I damn near ain't going to lower my one side there so you can see <laughs> Gwen will tell you when you get home <laughs> that's that's what I'm counting on and Robbie just looks at me he's like well yeah we got another story don't yeah, we another story <laughs> another story yeah, yeah, just, yeah, darn. oh we have so many it's crazy okay. yeah so you want a hunting story yeah okay <laughs> this this one goes out to my uh Rest in priest, brother uh, John Kichek. Him and I are hunting up there at Winnipeg uh, Lake up there in the Sisters Wilderness. And uh, we had Katie and Jester at the time. This was still pretty green in my career thing there. And uh, we had it went up there and uh, I rode Jester and we had our camp on Katie and he walked. And nice camp. Well, we were headed out. We're paralleling each up through the, the thick uh, forest there and uh, about every half hour we said well you sit down for, for every half hour we'll sit down for a few ten minutes and I sat on a god darn uh, yellow jackets nest first thing and it was colder than heck they're not very active at all so I been there a couple minutes and then I, I noticed them and I'm like hmm I'm okay I'm up I'm out of here and uh, I made it about 100 feet, 150 feet, and I thought I had her made, and one stung me right in the temple. And I'm like, son of a gun, that really sensitive up there. Shook it off, went on hunting, and mind you, I had a uh, Marlin guide rifle. Back when they made a guide rifle with all the ports and the end of the barrel. And I had a wide brim kind of rain hat, cowboy hat thing on. And so I, a muzzle brake with a wide brimmed hat. That, that was like a megaphone for the noise. Yeah. So it, that's leading up to what happened. Anyway, I get up there, I see these, an elk track. And it was pretty fresh. And I uh, walk over to the right. 
There's a little slope going going down, a little grassy spot there, and there's this raghorn bull standing there with his butt to me uh, looking back. And I up and shot at him, and it just about dropped me. To, I missed him. Dang near dropped me to my knees from the noise. The concussion of at, the muzzle brake. Uh, 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 and it was <clears throat> kind of dense forest, in dense forest right there. Anyway, uh, the elk starts running through through the trees sideways, and I jump jump down at a, a run as fast as I could, a uh, few feet there, uh, down down towards that grassy spot, and he's going through the trees. I fired about two more shots, and I think the third one, I hit him right in the spine, and down he went. Pretty happy. Went over, finished him off. Gutted him out real quick. Went back to camp. Flagged my way out of there. That's before we had GPSs, things. And anyway, flagged my way back to camp and uh, got in camp and had the blood on my hand and Jester and Bandy. Were no, Jester and, and, and uh, Katie. Katie. Katie, pardon me. Don't give Bandy a bad name. Jeez. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, they're snorting and not going on because they were. They'd been tied up for like a day, two days. They get pretty bored yeah, they're, all they're, the time. They're full they need, of energy. They need a job. Anyway, I calmed Jester down, and yeah, that's fine, Dandy. And I worked quite a while with Katie, calmed her down, and pretty good. And I was, okay, you don't get behind him. That's being pretty cautious about not being behind him with her blood on me. So I, I duck into the tent there and uh, get some stuff. And, and uh, anyway, I... Uh, come back out of that darn tent forgot about the blood forgot about katie kind of thing and she reached out and cow kicked me right square in the gut dropped me like a sack of rocks again <laughs> and i was doing a michael jackson break dance laying down underneath her i, I picked myself up and uh, and uh, after a while yeah, saddled up Jester and rode that back up there to where the elk was, and I skinned it out a whole bunch more. It was getting late in the day, and I figured, well, the next morning John and I will take lead both mules up there and pack it out. I come back to camp and ride in, and John's there, and we had a makeshift hitching post in a tree there, and John's leaning against the hitching post and unsaddled Jester and walk over there to John and, and he said, well, how'd it go today, John? And where'd you go? Oh, up here and this and that. And did you see anything? No, I saw some old tracks. That's about it or so. And he said, how'd your day go? And I go, well, I got one. John just kind of put her off. He go, what? You got one? Son of a gun, you, you don't seem very excited. He says, well, yeah. I'm clinging yeah. to life. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and then I tell him the story. I told him. I can't hear, and I got kicked. <laughs> I got a bee sting in my head here. I, got, I can't hear, and I got kicked in the gut. <laughs> How'd your day go? <laughs> <laughs> but I did get an elk, so but, at the end of the day, it's a win. <laughs> but anyway, we just gutted it out and went up there the next day with both of them. Was Katie good with meat? Yeah, that was okay. That was okay. I don't remember. Yeah, it was. she was good that day. Anyway, John led her down out of there. I led Jester down out of there, and uh, it was a good deal. Yeah. But that was uh, some of the stuff that can happen when you let your guard down or you're you know you're about maybe four years five years into your mule thing you got to be careful with blood especially because you don't know and mm -hmm. you know we have we have a new mule <clears throat> ruby and i have no idea how she's going to be around blood know. no clue at least the thing i i miss and that that you're lucky for having is lewis her dad had mules and she's been around mules since she was two years old mm -hmm. And uh, her dad has taught her a lot of things to do and don't. I pretty much... Uh, you had to learn that. I hard. just yeah. learned everything in a school of hard knocks yeah. there. And uh, and they went through quite a, f a few of those. Well, and a lot of accidents <laughs> you can see coming before they happen. Yeah. But that's experience, too. And, and even with that, you st <laughs> it doesn't matter how many years you do it, you get less accident-prone 
because you get better at seeing a problem before it's a problem Mm -hmm. and and that's good but man like when you don't get raised with a mule like there's a lot of people that email me and they're like man we really want to get a mule and i'm like "Uh uh-huh yeah you don't get a mule a mule gets you (laughs) i mean that's especially if you're new um it's it's they're they're not the easiest animals they're the most wonderful and can be the most loving amazing animals a bad mule is a horrible mule yeah, and, and we've had some that we just sent down the road like that yeah. cody mule we had out here with dad yeah. well you, we're in hell's canyon robbie and i and cool. yogi and robbie rides in on his string and my dad's riding his new mule cody and he's leading otis fury and hank and yogi and i are walking and we go up the trail and otis fury and hank are standing in the trail And dad is down over the hill. Cody is down in the bottom of the hill. And dad pops up. Arms in the air. I'm okay. (laughs) We're like, what the hell just happened? But Cody had taken him off, dumped him off the side of the trail. And it was an absolute disaster, you know. And so on the way out, yeah, uh, dad couldn't uh, uh, lead the pack string off Cody uh, because he was such a jerk. So I rode my horse and Yogi had to walk. Yogi had to walk out by by himself, and I led the mules. But that mule, if Dad wasn't holding back on him, he was wanting to run out the whole time. Out, and it was just it was just a constant battle. Then we come out here to the Steens. Yeah, back to back to what that Cody jumping off the trail. It was one of those things like that other wreck she's talking about. It's steeper than heck. Yeah. And 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 no. No good, no good horse, no good mule, or any darn thing. That'd be the last place they're stepping over the edge, or level, bucking, or uh, bucking, or want to take off down the and hill. And that's the first hill. thing he did. Because they injure themselves. They're too smart for that. And when that animal did that to him, I was like, "Wow, you got a good mule, or a good horse, or you got nothing." Yeah, he and, he was and, not good. So that we was pretty dangerous. That was dangerous. And then that whole ride out, it was so stressful because Dad was like riding a, a stick of dynamite. He was holding back, holding him back, holding him back the whole time. We come out here to the Steens, same thing. And I'm on my big mule, Otis, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh. This mule my dad's riding is like a little ticking time bomb. Dad can't relax. He's not enjoying himself. He's terrified. I mean, not terrified isn't the word, but you could tell he was holding that mule back all day from bucking him off. Mm-hmm. and Or breaking into a big run. Or, or whatever. Goofy, yeah, he just, he just wanted to blow up, and you could tell. And so I'm riding my big mule, Otis. Just no care in the world. La, la, la. And next thing I know, Otis falls in one of these big, what are these animals that make these big holes out a here? A badger hole or something. Falls in this giant badger hole, and I feel both of his hind feet just go funk into the ground and he just he doesn't buck or do anything he just lunges his hind end out of the hole and he pushes and then shoves out like a slingshot and he was so strong when he lunged out of that big hole I literally flew 20 feet in the air and the next thing you know I'm like punk on the ground and I'm laying there, and I look over, and Otis is standing there looking at me like, why are you on the ground? Like, now, what, what are you doing? Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, mind you, o- 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 Otis is every bit of 16 hands high. He's pushing 17. And, and, uh, 17, yeah, every bit of it, you know. He's and, enormous. And he he dwarfs my mules and Lewis's and her other mules. He, he's got to be... 15 1700 pounds he's huge so you so she's up on over the top well i mean (laughs) like i said he it's even a good one if they're not trying to hurt you you can get hurt and and he wasn't trying to be mean he's never tried to do anything on on his back mean Mm -hmm. ever in his life he just was getting out of that badger hole but he's so strong I literally, like, when he jumps, I swear to God, you catch G-forces. So I'm the one who gets dumped. After watching my dad all day, I'm thinking my dad's going to get dumped. I'm the one dumped on the ground. So I get over there, and I climb back on my mule. And luckily, I landed on my side. I didn't break my bow. I had my bow strapped to my backpack. We were bow hunting. Mm -hmm. Get back on the mule. Because he's just standing there like, what the heck. Uh, And we go around the corner, and we run into another bow hunter in... Yeah, I was, I was up ahead of you yeah. quite a ways and didn't see you fall off. 
yeah. or, or that happened. And yeah, I was up ahead and I'm kind of like waiting, waiting, waiting. So here they come and, and Lewis comes up to me and he says, I've had it. I've had enough. I got to get I, off. This I, mule. I've, I've had enough of this son of son of a gun. Uh, uh, let's unsaddle. I want to unsaddle him and ride Jester. And I was. And right. that takes a lot for my dad. And and he because he. And I was towing. You know. Riding one, packing one, and had the empty one, one. Empty one was Jester in the back. Now go. Yeah. Well, and that the I mean, ro- for, guy on the rock for thing. For my dad, yeah. though, I mean, like this is a man who's had mules for forty years. For he, I've never in my life seen my dad say, I'm getting off this mule. Because it was, the mule was such a stick of dynamite. He was sick of fighting him. He was just absolutely miserable out here. And also heartbroken, I think, because his mule, Chester, had passed away the year before. And when you have one for 20-something years, and you have memories on them, and you know them like your best friend... You know what they're going to do before they do it. You know, you have that relationship kind of like, you know, people have with their dogs. And when he lost Chester, you know, Cody was that replacement. And and I think my dad was more, it was just disappointing for everybody that he right. turned out to not be Yeah, even safe, myself, I want, you know, you know it, it was a big thing. Even to me, uh, losing Chester, uh, Chester's brother, uh, I'd been a lot of miles with that mule. And, and that was... Lewis's favorite mule. Mm-hmm. That was a dandy too, and yeah. uh, lost him, and uh, and then he got the. He finally got up enough nerve, you know, or whatever there to to buy the Cody mule, and we're we're all right together, hoping that it, f- hoping the best for him, you know, that uh, the new mule works out. for And him. he was sweet on the yeah. ground, and, and you and could and do anything to him. He was a dog, but you mm-hmm. know, at home he fought with our mules. He was really aggressive. Mm. Everybody bickered con- constantly. Like, there was no harmony in our herd. Mm. He was just a chump. And so we run into this other bow hunter, and Dad yeah, tells... Yeah, he was... The other bow hunter yeah. is in this rocky place, open. Super rocky. And he's sitting by this big rock. And Lewis and Christy are on this uh, juniper tree down, he- down here. I'm on Otis. And I'm riding across, and we're all talking to the bow hunter guy. And Lewis says... I hop off and I'm holding Bandy, and yeah, and then your dad walks up and says, "says I uh, I want to unsaddle uh, saddle him and and I want to ride Jester." He steps up to Jester and undoes, like I says, undoes the cinch on uh, on him there and uh, goes to take the saddle off. Well, he blows up, and uh, Cody takes off just a buck in as hard as he right. can buck, and and he. And then Bandy jerks the lead rope out of my hand, and my my three ran up up the hill a couple hundred yards, and they stopped and were just eating. They took off like yeah. fast, and I'm on my mule Otis, and that Cody mule is bucking a circle around me and this other bow hunter. Yeah. He's like running a fifty yard circle as yeah. as hard as he can. And now, mind you, I'm on my mule. <laughs> this bow hunter. This bow hunter's <laughs> in the middle of it, right? The, the, the mule's yeah. running around us like we're the center of the world. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if Otis takes off bucking, I am. I just, I just yeah. fell off, right? Like literally, yeah. 20 minutes before, I don't want to fall off again. I'm like, ah, holding on for dear life. And that little Cody mule would come up to Otis, and Otis would turn his butt and kick at him, because Otis didn't mm. like him. Oh, him and Otis hated each other. And that little mule bucked. It absolutely destroyed my dad's riding yeah. saddle, and he bucked so hard. Uh, when he finally stopped and we caught him, Dad was kind of able to patch together his saddle enough to to ride home. Yeah, put it on uh, Chester. Chest- Jester. 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 Yeah. Yeah, it was the, the funny. It was weird because it was a pretty good sized rock that the bow hunter was, and we were just chatting with him a little bit at first about what they had seen and what was going on, and then the like she said, just to elaborate World War III. on. It, that 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 guy was doing laps around the rock and around the bow bow thing just a buck and the next thing you know the saddles underneath and uh, oh, it was anyway a nightmare. yeah it was the bow hunter was like shaking his head oh. he, he could not believe it absolute nightmare rodeo that mule so it was everything dad could do to not shoot him right there I'm not gonna lie like I think dad he had a pistol if he would have had a pistol 
Cody might not have made it out of the woods that day. Like, it was one yeah. of those days where that mule's junk. Yeah, he started cheering up a bit when we were just leading him, and he was on Jester, and it, he was reminiscing about that. And well, we, we sold that kinda, mule back to the trainer that we got him from, and it just, you know, here's the, the kind of the moral of all of this, these war stories is, like, we've had, you know, these are all an hour worth of, stories of stuff that's happened with good animals with good minds and and just you know you make novice mistakes or or you know things like mm-hmm. bees happen or you know there's always something that's out of your control you you you, you roll a pack or you know whatever and it, it's inevitable but you know when you have a good one at least yeah. when you, you have those situations you know you don't always blame them yeah you usually have a, a good one or you have junk but then even like like we said the other day there, I was half out of the saddle, and there the hornets and bees were. I ended up getting stung by a hornet mm-hmm. a, a couple places, and uh, you, you know, it wasn't really my fault that time, and it wasn't really their their fault. You Just a thing that you, happens. You got to kind of, uh, you take it as it comes there, but it's... And I've and a I've, lot of it for I've gone you. Ten, I've gone ten years or better and haven't even had a, anything close to that ha- happen. You know, mm-hmm. everything's been once I learned. Yeah. And once they got got in a rhythm of ownership and them, uh, it was gone smooth. It was good, and I think a lot of it with you and Jester was like you said, substitute teacher. He knew you didn't know what was going on, and he had your card. And yeah. that's the tough thing about mules. They know immediately if you're afraid of them or if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And they they take advantage of people, and that's why they're a lot harder for novice owners. Um, mm-hmm. If you've never handled livestock, it's probably not the easiest animal to be your first as a mule, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And yeah. and people think they're, they're tougher than they are. You know, I had a guy email me the other day asking if he could put, you know, a whole elk on a mule. And, and, you know, the answer would be it depends if you bone it out and it's a spike, sure. But these things aren't, they're not, uh, they're not machines. You know, they, they get tired and they have feelings and, you know, you got to look out for them and, and look out for their well being. And, and they're a lot of work. I mean, constant. Yeah. And, you know, Yogi, I'm really fortunate that my husband is so patient because my hobby is scooping horse poop and, and um feeding and i just like petting him and doing stuff with him and he's i'm you know so patient with me on that and you know he's willing to learn like robbie this week you taught us that new walker hitch mm-hmm. and he's right in there learning with me so we can do more in the back country and um you know it's always good to learn something new instead of just doing stuff the same old way yeah. and um i really appreciate you know everything you know this week you packed out uh, my dear and you you spent 10 days out here with us yeah. um and i don't know why because you know obviously you're yeah, crazy be- beautiful scenery <laughs> oh it's the scenery not the company okay i got it it's fine <laughs> I, li- I like i like i like my mules and they like me you're okay <laughs> i'm okay I'm, okay. I'm not that great uh but no well, we- you you're always there's always something to uh yeah, yeah yeah you're almost like one of the mules <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact that is uh, a fact you know yeah. you just hang around yeah. uh, you hang around the Tituses her or her dad it's gonna be comical yeah. there's gonna be a memory right there uh, there's always something there's never been one trip moment. trip ever without a memory yeah and we've it, killed a lot of antelope you were here with me this year for my antelope hunt yeah two times I've been here twice with the, and then twice with my dad and yeah. my my last deer here yeah. and then this deer here yeah, we got a lot of good, a uh, lot of good times uh, in Hell's Canyon here in the Steens, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I, man, I can't thank you enough for spending the week with me and Yogi mm-hmm. out here. Like we kind of, kind of one thing to sum it up, like what you hit on a couple minutes ago there about you got to work with your mule and everything. When I bought my mules, uh, they're not like the Harley where I can put it on my kickstand and leave it in the garage all all winter. And when you come out here, it's just like us. You don't want to be out of shape. You want to have your horse or your mule in shape for the feed that where you're going. You got to you got to take care of them. And anyway, that became my life. And all most all the years since I've owned uh, the Harley and I've owned the mules, I still ride my bike, 
but not near like I ever used to. Mm-hmm. It's been on the kickstand. My life and what I do is trying to keep my meals in shape. Mm-hmm. So when I do go on trips like this mm-hmm. with her, uh, they don't get lame. They're no, they're 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 prepared for for mm-hmm. for the workout, you know. And so he was uh, shuttling. Food. We ran out of. We were out there for so long. We ran out of food. <laughs> Robbie had to come back mm-hmm. to our base camp, get food for us, get more food for the mules. Like we we went on overtime this week for sure, yeah. on the hunt. But uh, you know, you were you like you said, you're here for hunting season, and and we were happy to share it with you, and, and really yeah. glad that you know you're up long yeah. on this adventure. Well, I had a I had a really good time. I, I love I love being out here and. Uh, with the mules and it's it's it, it it really didn't matter to me whether I had the rifle or made made the shot on the deer or not I was seeing deer I was scouting I was glassing I was going where I'd mm-hmm. gone before and uh, and then report in and check with you guys mm-hmm. you know and, and and keeping track of each other's uh, in our hunts and out here and uh, and she had a tag, and that was really good. And then uh, the last day, last, last day. day, about halfway through the day, she 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 knocked up a big one. My mom calls that the hail mary. Yeah. Yeah, got the hail mary. And so. she she passed up quite a few smaller ones yeah. and whatever. And she's just plain picky, like <laughs> like a Titus is, you know. Have we? You know what? If you shoot the first deer you see, your hunt yeah. is over. Okay, yeah, so I'm just yeah. trying to prolong the fun. I knew you just yeah, I, and I thought that was the plan. Yeah, yeah, it we worked. Had a good it time. worked really good. And I knew when you left camp the last day that you, on today's day they're gonna get something. Yeah, and we did. I will. Thank God. Thank God. I was so mm. exhausted. I was like. 12 miles yesterday, I had six mile average days. I was beat, so I was really thankful. And I'm looking forward to a couple of days off before Yogi and I are gonna go pack into Wyoming. And it was a good refresher on everything on packing because we have a big trip ahead of us next week. And thank you for everything and I yeah. uh, appreciate you and love you guys and the mules. And they're so good and sweet, I love them. And uh, you guys, uh, thank you all for tuning into this episode of the Wild Nod Cut Podcast recorded from eastern oregon where we've been hunting deer and we're uh swapping some mule wreck stories so if you guys uh, are interested in buying a mule this might change your mind growing pains (laughs) (laughs) hey everyone chances are you'll be hunting in remote areas this hunting season with little to no cell phone service and because of that Onyx has a super awesome offline feature that allows you to download and save your maps within the Onyx app in advance of your hunt. Downloading the maps are super easy and it just takes a couple of minutes. So once you're in the field and you're using the Onyx hunt app in the offline mode, it's not only gonna save your battery life, but it's also gonna mean that your maps are always visible and available for your use. Onyx Hunt gives you the freedom to navigate wherever you want to go. And now you can save 20% on your new Onyx Elite membership when you use the code WILD20 during your online checkout. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.